the areas you would deploy it for is fat loss and AR upregulation. And they, it actually does do a fairly reasonable job at both of those things. You'll actually find you grow leaner and or you can cut easier when you are using this thing. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreadies.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Gorilla Mode AR. So this is a new product that I launched recently and it's a single ingredient product and a lot of people have been asking, how does it work? Should they get it? Um, and I kind of avoided making a video on it just cause, you know, I've done a breakdown of carnitine before, why I use it, what kind of uh, purpose it would be uh, deployed for. And, um, you know, like one of the things that should be noted guys is like the branding of certain products, they're done in a way to be like appealing above and beyond being like, like I'm trying to avoid certain scenarios where it's just like, if I have a single ingredient product, you know, like I've done the whole naming the product, what it's called. And it seems like it's not as exciting to like the general marketplace when you put it as just like, like straight up what it's called. Like for example, our, uh, our, uh, post-workout formula is just called like post-workout. You know what I mean? So, and it's not, it doesn't sell as well as I anticipated for being a like pretty, uh, like well-designed product that's uh, affordable for what you're getting in it with the cluster dextrin and whatnot. So with the carnitine product, you know, I was thinking what, like the only reason I have carnitine in, uh, on the Gorilla Mind site is because it's something I use personally and think it actually has efficacy for fat loss and for muscle building. And so like, I was thinking, what are we actually using this for that could be, you know, related back to the name. I'm either using it for androgen receptor upregulation, which is the main reason I use it, or fatty acid oxidation. There's only like two things you'd be using it for. So I was like, okay, like let's make this product sound cooler. Gorilla Mode AR, cause it's like androgen receptor, androgen receptor upregulator. That's like the point of using it. So I can get why it would be confusing though. Cause it's not really obvious when you're just looking at it. Well, like what the fuck is this thing? Gorilla Mode AR. It's like, what is this, like a gun? Like, <laughs> so for me, the, like I said, AR stands for androgen receptor. And as far as some people have been asking me just like a general breakdown, of how it works. So I'm gonna circle back to the carnitine and explain why I use it and what I think it is useful for. So is it good for guys who are, is it good, can women and men use it? Yes, both can use it. There's no problem with that whatsoever. And I would highly recommend both sexes take advantage of anything non-hormonal that they can to enhance fat loss and muscle building. It's just a no brainer. It has nothing to do with androgenic activity. So it's not gonna cause any kind of issues in that regard. So as far as what you would use it for, um, basically at the end of the day, your endogenous sex hormones that you produce, notably testosterone, which is the main muscle building hormone in your body, it transcribes its effects in tissues via something called the androgen receptor. So when it attaches to the androgen receptor and agonizes it, which is basically like, you know, like activating it essentially, like this is the process by which you are going to build muscle. It's like, yes, there's other receptors in the body that testosterone interacts with that will have downstream effects on muscle growth, like estrogen, the GH, IGF-1 axis, etc. but it largely, anabolics largely regulate their uh, muscle building activity via their interaction with the androgen receptor. So how does carnitine play into all this? It's something I totally wrote off for many years. I thought this was just some useless supplement that got pushed down our throats in the supplement industry by guys who made it seem like you could use it to get shredded and it had absolutely no merit whatsoever. So I personally never used it throughout my you know years of even buying supplements. When I was into all that shit, I used to buy some of the dumbest stuff from some of these big companies and um, they were total waste of money. But when it comes to L-carnitine, it's actually pretty cheap and it actually does work if you use a high enough dose, but you have to know exactly what you're using it for. So androgen receptors, something that is speculated to be a determining factor as to what your genetic potential is, is basically the androgen receptor content of your muscle. So how many androgen receptors do you have? How much uh, sex hormones do you have to interact with those androgen receptors? What kind of response element can you actually elicit from agonizing those receptors? And notably the, I'm sure you've seen the myostatin deficient uh, um, Belgian blues. I've talked about these in some like uh, the myostatin deficiency videos and whatnot and they, 
it's speculated that one of the main reasons why they are so ridiculously jacked and genetically gifted from birth is that they had the mutation in a myostatin gene, which prevent, or just a missing deletion entirely, that basically prevented these, like, this like limiting step that would prevent the body from understanding essentially how to, how to limit how much androgen receptors and myonuclei are actually like developed in this fetus. So, and obviously that's like, some of it is just uh, conjecture, but if you actually look at the literature, you'll actually see that um, AR content is significantly higher in these Belgian blues than the next um, not jacked one. <laughs> and, and they also have just more, more overall muscle cells in general than the next. So as far as how this relates back to, to humans, obviously you're limited genetically by a certain extent, as well as your genes and kind of your production of sex hormones and or how much anabolics you're using exogenously. So how does carnitine play into this? It's one of the few things that is shown to very potently upregulate androgen, androgen receptor content in the muscle. So if you can, in theory, upregulate AR content in the muscle, you now have that much more ability to transcribe effects in tissues through your agonizing of the AR and building potentially more muscle. And in practical application, it does seem like guys actually grow a bit better and a bit leaner when they deploy L-carnitine during their muscle building phases. And above and beyond that, something that goes overlooked too is how carnitine actually has an active role in carrying long chain activated fatty acids into the mitochondria for oxidation. So this is something that you can actually leverage in a pre-cardio or a pre-lifting context to actually burn more fat. How substantial is it? It's gonna kind of depend on how much you use because the bioavailability of carnitine is actually pretty shitty. So this is another reason why I wrote off carnitine entirely is because I was told over and over again, the bioavailability is so garbage that if you're not going to inject it, that it's totally useless. So I was like, okay, well, I don't wanna inject it every day. So I guess I'm not using it. And one of the problems too was all of the products on the market you'd find in the underground, like you have these sites, like research chemical websites and whatnot that sell injectable carnitine. And that's fine if you're willing to pin it, but they would sell it in concentrations of 200 milligrams per milliliter. And it's like, you would need a much higher dose to, to elicit an effect that would actually make it worth using from what I saw and from many anecdotal reports and reviews. So you would be literally having to pin like three milliliters of this shit on a daily basis, which is just like, you know, no one is going to adhere to that except the most hardcore. And for the amount of benefit you get from it, it's like, yeah, it can make an actual difference that's noticeable in your body pro progress and your body composition in general. But for three milliliter jabs on a daily basis, like deep intramuscular, a lot of people aren't going to adhere to that schedule, even if it can EQ you out another like five to 10% progress throughout your off season. So it's something that I basically overlooked until I started to, uh, until I came across compounding pharmacies and their higher concentrated L-carnitine solution. So this is something I found via my HRT clinic where I found out you can get a 500 milligram per milliliter pharma grade L-carnitine injectable. So this is where I actually took it for the first time and I started to use it on a regular basis. However, even for me, one milliliter, doing it every other day, which is basically how I've been doing it, it was still annoying. Like I, I would end up using it like two to three times a week just because it was really annoying. So like it works, but you have to be able to adhere to a schedule where you're using like 500 milligrams of it um, like every day, unfortunately, which is really fucking annoying. Like some people just don't care about jabbing, but I just don't like to do it that much, especially with an actual like deep shot. Like at least with TRT, I'm using like a shallow IM shot with like barely any volume of oil. With, it, with the carnitine, I'm literally pinning like one milliliter of solution every single day deep I am and it's just really it's a fucking hassle for me so I don't like it so that's where I start to look at the oral again because some of my friends actually do use it and they claimed it does work just as well you just have to dose it higher and I was thinking you know like how everybody in the community that uses it says oral L-carnitine is shit and I just basically took their word for it because you know, like they're intelligent individuals. And to be honest, when you actually look at the clinical data, you do see that the oral bioavailability is garbage, but it is bioavailable just to a much lesser extent. So if you pin 500 milligrams, like you're getting your 500 milligrams that you've just injected. But if you take 500 milligrams orally, you're getting like 
70, 70, 80 milligrams or something, which is like, it's gonna do nothing. So, you know, expectedly, you could see why people would say carnitine orally is a fucking waste of time. But when you actually dig into it, it's absorbed 14 to 18%. So bioavailability of dietary L-carnitine is 54 to 87% and is dependent on the amount of L-carnitine in the meal. So that's talking about dietary, like from an actual food source. However, from dietary supplements, absorption of L-carnitine Anywhere from between 500 milligrams to 6,000 milligrams is primarily passive. Bioavailability is 14 to 18% of dose. So this is from the clinical literature showing 14 to 18% bioavailability, which is really fucking bad. So we'll just average it out. And let's just say it's 15%. So fortunately though, carnitine is not the most expensive product to produce and you can just dose it much higher. So what we did and is sort of following in the footsteps of uh, some of my friends, like Vigorous Steve on YouTube. He is one of the uh, um, guys who basically convinced me that oral L-carnitine was actually worth uh, pursuing, is if you dose it at like 750 milligrams per capsule, which is the amount we could fit in it, that was literally the most I could fit in this capsule, you can end up taking like, you know, four, five, six capsules of this stuff and yield the same benefit that you would otherwise get from a 500 milligram injection. However, there's a caveat to this, which is, unfortunately, there is a potential carcinogenic component of carnitine. And this comes into the whole, you know, the arguments from the vegans and whatnot who are like, red meat is carcinogenic, blah, blah, blah. They're referring to oftentimes the metabolization of carnitine in the body. And when you digest it and it goes through the stomach, and it produces a metabolite called TMAO, which is something that is not proven to be carcinogenic, but it is strongly implied to be such. So you would not ideally want to be using oral all the time. This is why injectable is far superior, You're getting way more of the bioavailability so you can use far less of it to yield the same effect. Um, and you're not getting the TMAO because you're bypassing the standard digestion process that you would otherwise have to go through when you're orally ingesting the carnitine. So obviously in that aspect, injectable is far superior. And this is why when I f am able to, I will do the injection, but when I really don't feel like it, I will opt for the oral, but I keep it infrequent. If you're somebody, now again, the TMAO thing is not proven necessarily. So it's not like it is definitive whether it will or will not do something. And I know many individuals who've used carnitine for years without problem orally, and it works just as well inje as injection. You just have to use more than enough of it. So this is like, through Gorilla Mode AR, this is basically my ease of administration alternative. So for people who don't wanna inject, including the days I don't wanna inject, I opt for this and I will pop five to six capsules of this stuff, 30 to 60 minutes before exercise or any kind of activity. So on, that, on the day, if I am working out that day, I will use it 30 to 60 minutes pre-workout if I don't wanna inject that day. If I'm not, literally working out that day, I'm still gonna be doing some sort of activity and it's typically just through like low intensity walking. I will still take it 30 to 60 minutes before that because ideally you would actually use it before some sort of activity and get the fatty acid mobilization that you would otherwise like benefit from on top of the AR content upregulation. So these are the two kind of like deployed, the areas you would deploy it for is fat loss and AR upregulation, and they it actually does do a fairly reasonable job at both of those things. You'll actually find you grow leaner and or you can cut easier when you are using this thing. And even when you're bulking, it seems like you have a bit of an enhanced ability to gain muscle. It almost seems like the androgens in your body or the exogenous anabolics you're using work just a little bit better when you're using it in conjunction with L-carnitine because of that upregulated AR content in the muscle. So it is a worthwhile addition it's cost effective, it works. It's just a matter of how you wanna do it. So if you wanna inject it, I would advise injecting it every single day if you're gonna do it. And uh, this is just an amino acid, by the way. It's not like you, you know, some fucking crazy thing here. It's not like I'm advising injecting hormones. And in fact, I don't even advise it actually. I advise you talk to your doctor about it and ask them if it's the right move for you. Don't listen to me. Only listen to me about the oral version, not the injectable. So anyways, if you're gonna use it, and your doctors advised you to inject it, the efficacy is likely maxed out using it on a daily basis. If you're using it orally, I would uh, it would still be a daily basis, uh, daily use context. However, you know it's going to boil down to how much do you hate injecting versus not injecting. Because for me, 
I literally have access to a 500 milligram per milliliter pharma grade solution. And some days I will still opt for the oral if I just really don't have the time. Um, like for me, I actually have to schedule my gym times. So for me, if I'm like running behind and I'm like, oh fuck, I don't have time to jab a milliliter of this shit and then run to the gym. Like, yeah, I'll jump, I'll go for the capsules instead. I'll try to, on an ideal situation where I am, uh, my time is planned well, I will uh, use the injectable. But any day I do not plan well, I will use the oral or I'm just too lazy to inject. But I try to limit it. But at the end of the day, there's no way to prove that it is or is not more harmful. It is just being careful. And I would advise being careful if you can. But if you want to avoid injecting, oral L-carnitine has been used for years and it is very well tolerated. And there's a lot of all the clinical literature is basically using oral. Like when you see all the studies, like looking at the benefits in humans, it's often done with the oral version. So the injectable is going to work better, but there's a lot of literature supporting its use orally as well. It's not like there's some like extrapolation going on to prove that it works orally and it's people like pulling it out of their ass. It's like it actually does work orally just to a far lesser extent. So you need to dose it higher to reach that same equivalency. So for example, if you're taking, so if you have 750 milligrams per capsule, the recommended dose on the bottle is 3000 milligrams per day as the max. But if you actually wanted to yield 500 milligrams, if you were injecting it, you would have to pop five capsules because that would be 750 times five. So you have 3,750 milligrams per day. If you wanted to look at the bioavailability of 15%, you're looking at 562 and a half milligrams. If you took four capsules, which is the max amount on the bottle, you would be looking at 3000 mill milligrams orally ingested. And if you times that by 0.15, you get 450. So like realistically, you can get away with four a day and still get a pretty significant benefit. Personally, I take five to six just because I want to I want to max it out when I use it. So, and it's a lot easier to tolerate it orally so I can push the envelope a bit more with the dosages versus with injection. I'm basically limited to my, uh, I use slim pins for it still. Like I use a slim pin barrel just with a bit of a longer tip. And um, so I still use a one milliliter barrel at most. So I, I never go above 500 milligrams per shot when I inject it. So anyways, those are the two scenarios in which I'd use it, which have a lot of overlap because when you're growing, you can grow leaner and potentially grow more. And then when you're cutting, it makes cutting a lot easier. And anyone who's actually tried high dose L-carnitine or high dose injectable L-carnitine should, will probably be able to attest to the fact that when used every single day, it does actually produce a noticeable difference in your physique and your uh, body composition outcomes. So um, cheap, cost-effective thing to add on, and especially for women who are looking for non-androgenic things to add to their regimens in order to enhance their muscle growth and strength and you know body goals and whatnot. This is a pretty no-brainer go-to, in my opinion. So um, that is Gorilla Mode AR. If you're interested, it is on the site. And uh, obviously, if you can tolerate injections, then that's probably going to be the way to go for uh, you, if you literally don't give a fuck. But anyways, for the, for the rest of you, the oral, that is what it does. And I do think it actually is effective as long as you use enough of it. So if you pop one or two of these a day or even three of these a day, I wouldn't expect any substantial difference. Once you get into like four or five a day territory, that's where you start to get into, okay, you're getting the equivalency of an at least decent dose of injection at least based on the clinical literature that I've seen. So anyways, take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you've had an experience with L-carnitine, um, let us know. Did it uh, help? Did it not? Did you use it on a daily basis? What was the dosage protocol you used during your experimentation with it? And what was the outcome of that dosage on a daily basis? And it'll help more people make a more informed decision as to if this is something worth spending money on or not. And, um, you know, anything, all the comments help the algorithm too. So they're obviously much appreciated. And there's not very many videos on actual, like, sensical use of carnitine, in my opinion. It seems like there's just a lot of random supplement companies that'll be like, oh, yeah, carnitine is in our pre-workout because it's, like, such a good fat burner. But there'll, there'll be no description about how it works, like, when you should be using it um, to enhance lipolysis. There's no context about how it works in an AR upregulation context how the dosage used in the pre-workout is pretty much fucking pointless, um, how injectable may be better for you and may not be carcinogenic or what kind of you know risk, risk you should be aware of and whatnot. There's not a lot of information on it as well as like what the actual efficacious dose is, which is like several thousand milligrams. So um, I don't know, like again, just uh, all the comments and uh, reviews of carnitine will help everyone uh, you know, come up with a more uh, educated conclusion on uh, if it's something worthwhile adding into their protocol or not. So anyways, 
Enough rambling for me. If you want to check it out, it's on girlmind.com. Anything else I am associated with is in the video description below as well. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.